all right guys so so here we are in the shop we're gonna be working on uh, the pin that I was just showing you guys I've already turned the cap it's not quite polished to the level that I, I want it to be pretty much turned to final dimension I may come back in and work this down to a little bit more of a taper here I'm trying to do a postable pin where I can actually post the cap on the end of the uh, pin while in use the threaded insert has already been uh, inserted um, and glued in and everything so there's the cap here's what's going to be the body again it's this amazing uh, uh, resin blank from bullseye turning supply if you guys are into turning and that kind of thing go check them out at bullseye turning supply.com they're just amazing by the way this is a bullseye uh turning supply kit that i'll be turning i am in no way sponsored by you know bullseye turning supply.com or anything you know like that i'm not being paid i'm not being sponsored uh, i i pay for all the materials myself and everything i'm open to discussion kate if you're if you're listening so uh, without further ado or however the kids say it let's crank this puppy up and get started and uh make a pin as we're drilling this blank you'll notice that the interior dimensions are stepped as seen here in this very crude drawing. It requires three drill bits at three different depths. I've made a little cheat sheet here to show those bits and depth prescribed in the instructions. First will be the quarter inch and that will go two and five eighths inch all the way into there. This will allow room for the, in the roller ball, it's the spring and roller ball insert in the fountain pen that allows room for the cartridge converter a cartridge will probably fit into this area which is done with the 5 16 and that goes to this point here they're at one and seven eighths inch and you'll notice that i already have marks at about one and seven eighths inches and then finally we have the 13 30 seconds bit that will go just into that point there and that will allow for the insert to be inserted so i've got you guys in for a turner's eye view here so the first thing i like to do when i'm drilling a a blank is use one of these guys right here this is a starter bit it's very rigid mount them up into here and then i slide the entire tailstock forward to find center and i haven't tightened down yet as you can see here this is still moving around i haven't tightened this down yet that way i can kind of grab center first before i crank everything down and then crank everything up so that's not quite there we're gonna where I don't have material moving around the outside perimeter of that starter bit. Now I'm going to tighten it down and we're just going to go ahead and get a, um, a reference hole started in here. That gives me a reference for my drill bit and we'll be doing that part next. Okay, so now that we've I've already loosened this up, now that we've got the pin turned to a size and shape that will fit into the collet on both ends, uh, just like so, Boop. Boop. right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna check the depth of this guy. We're gonna get this guy in here, and we're gonna we're gonna go like this until it bottoms out up into the piece like that, right? Now that it's you know just touches right here, that means that this is the depth of our hole so as you can see that's not the entire blank in fact there's a lot left over which is kind of good because i forgot about this dimple in here so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to going to mark off uh this depth with the back edge of an exacto knife i found that work whether it's super shiny brand new or this or whatever is the back of an exacto let me show you one of these guys right using a regular exacto knife so once i have that take the back edge of my exacto knife and grab a little line just a little scratch or two and there to let me know where I can start tapering and and you know where the hole ends so that's what's up that's what I'm gonna do next all right now we're back up chucked we've got two lines marked off this is the depth of the hole that is drilled this line here and this line is where I want the final end of the pin to be uh, basically because I, I would do this as an extra long pin thing is i do want to be able to post it i'm worried about it being monstrously long when posted so i'm going to try to bring this pin down to about that length just there you guys can see the two lines i'm sure 
and they go all the way around now as I basically just set my exacto knife on the lathe and with the other hand I spun it as I held this up against there so I'm just going to chuck up the one quarter inch bit and we're going to drill that guy down to this mark here don't know if you can see that but that's where we're going I like to get it to where it's just about touching lock everything down let's get this party started Got, one guy, make it loose. got to hold on to this guy or else it might kick loose it might grab in here spin this whole thing spin it loose and throw it at you at high speed that's no fun for anybody all right once i get in so far i'll i'll go ahead and pull back out it starts making a little bit of noise and you'll notice there's a little bit of steam i like to grab a wet rag and just kind of cool everything down a little bit a little bit of moisture a little bit of water i cool that guy off right there and then we go back in and my tailstock only has so much travel so what i'll have to do is after this drilling i'll have to come back out now i have to that my tailstock is all the way back threaded back into here i have to come up into here some and actually get started and, lock down, and then lock it down and finish out the drilling uh, one thing i've noticed is keeping tension right here with this guy and don't let my my quill be loose then i tend to get a lot straighter uh a lot straighter performance so that's full depth and we will back it out there we go before i take this out i will go ahead and cool it off again so angry so hot so angry okay i like to go ahead and get this guy right back into the kit before i have a chance to lose it all right now just like that now we'll go up to the 5 16 drill bit and there should be a mark there is well actually you know what let me let me back my quill all the way up first and then slide my entire tail stock up into position and we're going to drill this guy i know a lot of turners you know drill at, at a much lower speed i haven't noticed that it's hurt me that much i give everything a minute to cool down just to you know i guess just to make everybody happy i'll i'll drop the speed down some and there we go and we're change speeds okay my blank is still a little warm so one thing i can do is just kind of lay that over there just for a second just to pull some of the heat out of the blank as well if it's if it's too warm i like to do that mostly because it it gums it starts to um, gum up into the drill bit and doesn't let the uh, the shavings clear through the flute efficiently so we're going to go in with the 5 16 to a depth of about one and seven eighths and because now basically what i'm doing is is just reaming the existing bore actually wants to grab more because i don't have the drill bit clearing the way for the flutes and so the flutes will actually try to grab a bit more on me um done and done cool that guy off nice and cool all right and then i'll back into my kit with it because i will it sorry i'm talking about it all right 13 30 seconds going into a depth of about one and three sixteenths inch uh here like i said i've already got the the you know the depths pretty much marked off because i've done one of these recently so i'm gonna try to grab a little more uh because i won't be not with the a little bit so really you gotta really hold on to that guy right there and and as you can see here we're not centered that presents a problem uh, but it is not a problem that cannot be remedied. The solution now is to leave this guy in this chuck at this position without changing anything. Go ahead and get a, a live center on this guy. We're going to go with a 60 degree coon. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and go right into that same. Uh oh. I lost my little sandpaper here. See, this is the type of life I live. It's all part of the creative process, right? So we're going to go right into that center point there. We're going to tighten it down just a tiny, tiny little bit just to give us a little bit of tailstock stabilization as we turn this guy. I'm going to turn this guy down, hopefully enough to where I can fit him into a collet chuck. This will go where this currently is. You'll see later in the uh, in the video. Probably not this one. Probably a uh, a bigger collet, and I can start shaping the body and everything. And then I will do the uh, the insert. I'll get the insert in there. So we're going to turn this. We dance with Hubrungia. And I'll grab 
got my trusty old calipers here. It's a three quarter, probably because this is currently larger than three quarters. Kind of dialed in. And as you can see, this will not currently slip down around this thing. It almost does, and I mean almost. I mean, if I if I were to beat on this thing, I could probably get it in there. Uh, so I'm thinking, what that means is that will not allow me to remove enough material uh, to get centered on the hole that I've drilled. So what I'm thinking is I might need to go into this 5 8 with it. And is that a possibility? Let's see. We're going to actually go to... Let's see. Now, does the hole leave enough room to where I'll have enough material that I won't completely blow everything out at 5 8 Learn as we turn, okay? You can see here already the wobble to that. See that tool bouncing up and down like that? That means this thing is not centered. So this is the process of basically centering around a hole that we drilled off center. As long as we didn't change anything from the time that we drilled the hole and the time that we started turning down to closer to final diameter, we have a lot higher likelihood of actually turning the material down to around the center of the hole instead of turning the, you know, I mean, instead of just leaving the hole off center uh, as we go. All of that being said, BullseyeTurningSupply.com does offer a set of mandrels for these. They are a set of closed-in mandrels that are threaded. They're meant to be used basically once you drill the hole, you go ahead and put the insert in to the unturned blank. You thread the, uh, the whole thing onto the mandrel that is held in a um, pallet chuck. And then you basically turn down to around the center of the hole that way. Um, and basically what I'm doing now is I'm using the, uh, the parting tool kind of like a little teeny tiny little um, uh, skew chisel. See how I'm going in at an angle like this? And I'm kind of just using that, that sweet spot at the bottom, this bottom edge right here almost, that bottom corner, to kind of clean up and remove material across the length of the piece. I will be investing in some of the mandrels just because they seem to make life so much easier and more enjoyable. We're gonna check our calipers now and we're gonna try and test. We're still not down anywhere near where we need to be yet. I'm going to go ahead and grab my, ch my skew chisel. I'm going to come in very carefully. And as we approach final diameter, see, I don't want to leave the types of tool marks that the, uh, the parting tool can leave. Something that might be difficult to uh, get rid of later. So I'm going to try not to do that. This is where it helps too to be ambidextrous, using your left hand as an anchor hand in the back and your right hand as the guide. Which, which is really, I'm kind of describing that backwards. Your anchor hand is your guide hand. This is, this is what's driving. This hand up here pretty much just holds everything down to the tool rest and does micro movements. The large movements are done by your anchor hand back in the back. Getting it down and down and down. This is what's called a planing cut. This just helps to get everything kind of the same diameter across a larger distance. Yeah. So, we're going to check our diameter again. Still not there. Just because you guys know I have all the patience of Job or Job or... Just continuing to check the the, uh, the girth, the calipers. You don't, know, you don't want to go too much smaller than that uh, than that collet, Chuck, because once you do, it doesn't fit, Chuck. Ready? This is what the old timers call sneaking up on it. You know, there, you know, more, you know, before you know it, you're at the right you're at the right thing, uh, the right measurement, basically. And that's kind of how I get away with you know not using numbers a lot in my in my craft work, uh, be it this flat work or whatever else. I don't use a lot of numbers, you know, I, I kind of use story sticks, I use um, calipers, that kind of thing, because numbers just, for me, numbers just make things more difficult, they confuse me, so I'm not a numbers person, so what? I have calipers, let's see, so pretty, close. pretty close, in fact, I bet I could use my calipers at this point to go ahead and down to the right size, there we go. And that's where I need to be. You see that little groove right there? Uh, 
Um, I don't recommend trying to do that, um, especially for new turners. I'm a new turner. I'm not going to act like I'm all seasoned and everything. I'm a fairly new turner. I've only been doing this for about a year. Yeah, this thing will grab those calipers straight out of your hand and sling them straight at your face before you know what's happening. I do not recommend doing it that way. I do as I say, not as I, you know, show in my videos. That's what I'm That's what I'm Okay. A wee bit of clean up here. And we don't like no wobble. We're going to just take this uh, collet truck and we're just going to try it on there and see. Okay, so it fits and it fits fairly well. Next. Oh, we're going to be turning this around. And we're going to be going, uh, I'm going to take this guy right here off. Okay, 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 so I've got a couple of little drinking straws over here that I use. I don't have an air compressor. I take this, I put it in there, I leave a little space around it, and I blow really hard a few times, and I'll turn it, and I'll tap it. And that kind of blows out a lot of the, uh, you know, trash that might be inside there. Let's up chuck. <laughs> Come here, Chuck. Is that here? Wait a minute. It's going to be Chuck. 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 I want this to be a gradual taper here, so I'm actually coming back on the other side of my line just a little bit, starting there, and coming in. That way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and part this off now with this really old craftsman parting tool. I love it. I reshaped it a little bit, but uh, I love this little parting tool, man. It's just this old steel. I don't know what it was, what craftsman was doing back in the day, but they nailed it. I mean, it's some of the steel is some of the best steel that I've had to work with. Uh, of course, given I use cheaper, and I'll turn that into something maybe later. Uh, you know, a little tiny uh, vase or a pot or something for a dollhouse. I don't know. Who knows? You know, maybe I'll use it as an insert in another uh, pin, something like that. And so now I'm just going to back this guy up so I can get. My tool rest. Also, never change your position of your tool rest while the piece is turning. That's hard. So I'm going to put this out just a little bit. And I'm going to there. Like so. Very light cuts now because I don't have any kind of a tailstock support. Just a little bit. Okay. Now, now, the easiest way to be able to find out if the cap is going to fit. And how well do Oh, not even close. So what? This is a number. It's like a thing where it's got to be narrow. It's got to be narrow. Anything got to be So, we have to do... This is the design process. This is what the design process looks like, people. Okay? We go, you know, what are we doing? Good morning. Change the line. That's how we... We got it. I'm not going to have to do... I'm not going to have to do... I'm not going to have to do... I'm
Don't be a herb stick. No, you got Two more. First one, I want to touch. Peace. Okay, I'm just going to make that I will use the, you know, secret thing tool to get, you know, to get out, you know, out, just to get the final shooting, you know, uh, we still got to use you know, so, what do you have to do the final shooting, uh, done by hand, you know, matches, you know, the thing that makes fun of it, is, uh, if you're not going to do that, I mean, I'm going to do the final shooting, uh, between guys who use different tools and, you know, to use, uh, I don't know about that, I mean, I think you're going to do a couple, uh, you're going to do the game part of the video, probably, you know, you're going to use this thing, you know, what is, what do I have, you know, I have to say, 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 I don't know what that's going to be, uh, what's that? And, uh, hopefully, I'll have a better little knock, then, oh, who's your name, uh, no, 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 no,
this down and finish it, you know, basically just with, with sanding and micro mesh and that kind of thing, and then I'll polish. All right, so do we want the converter for this? So we'll just take our converter. Actually, just go for these cartridge converters. Everything is working fine. <laughs> There it is. A fire on the mountain. Custom fountain pen that does indeed post. Watch this. It posts. It's on there. You know, I held my hand under. I'm like, I'm not real sure, but it's on there. It's on there. So yeah it does post there we go